Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing a review of Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is a book that released in fall 2020 that I was really looking forward to and I'm glad I finally got a chance to read in December. It's the first book in a trilogy. The setting is inspired by the pre-Columbian Americas, so it's basically based on the indigenous cultures of North and South America. Just to be clear, it's a secondary world setting. It's not analogous to our own world and the cultures, it's very mixed uh, and mixed and matched. Is that a thing? Anyway, she really draws upon different aspects of different cultures. I can't really speak to their authenticity, but it is a very unique fantasy setting and an aspect of it I really enjoyed. I had never seen this kind of setting in a fantasy novel, and that's one of the reasons I was looking forward to it. The other reason I was really excited to pick up this book is because I had read the first two books in her, I guess I'd call it an urban fantasy series. It's called The Sixth World. The first book is Trail of Lightning, which was her debut novel, and the second one was Storm of Locusts. So I really enjoyed those books. At least I enjoyed her writing. It's just not a sub-genre of fantasy that I really read all that often. I'm not a big urban fantasy person, and it was just a little dark and dystopian, but there were a lot of things about her writing that I really liked. In general, the characters and the fast-paced plot, it was very readable. So I was looking forward to seeing what she would do in more of an epic fantasy situation. So Black Sun follows four different characters and the events leading up to the winter solstice. So I really wish I'd gotten out this review a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember exactly what day I finished reading this book, but it was actually very appropriate because it was around the winter solstice. The book is mostly a countdown to the 20 days leading up to the events that are going to be taking place at this solstice, but there are some flashbacks for certain characters as well. As backstory, most of the book centers around a city called Tova, which is ruled by four important clans, and then there's a priesthood that's very influential. Several generations before the story is set, the priesthood caused the members of the Crow clan, a lot of, at least a lot of the members, to get assassinated in an event that was called the Night of Knives. So this is something that happened maybe a couple generations before the book, as in the only people that still remember it are very old. Old, but it is a trauma that is really in the psyche of the city and of the members of the Carrion Crow clan. The cool thing about these four clans is that each clan has an animal that it's named after and they have giant animals of that type of animal that they have in their possession. So the people from the Crow clan ride giant crows. It's not a huge part of the book, but it's in there and I think it's super cool and I hope it really gets explored more in later books in the series because I think riding giant crows is kind of awesome. So I'm getting away a little bit from the serious part of the book, which is that a few generations ago all these people got murdered because they were bringing back their old religion or starting to follow their old religion more and the priesthood didn't like that very much and saw it as a threat. One of the main viewpoint characters in the book, Serapio, his mother is from the Crow clan and his father is an outsider from another city. So in the prologue of the book, his mother basically as the start of a plot for revenge for what happened in the Night of Knives, she takes her son and makes him stare directly into an eclipse so that he goes blind and then sews his eyes shut and tells him that on a certain day in the future he is going to go to the city of Toba and he is going to open his eyes and become a god. This is in the prologue and it's also basically implied on the uh, jacket cover of the book so I don't really feel like I'm giving too many spoilers there but it gives you a feeling for the feel of the book. So in the present day he needs to get from his current location to the city of Tova in 20 days for the solstice, so that's what the countdown is for. Then as another viewpoint character, we have Siala, who is a sea captain who gets hired to take him. She is an interesting character as well. She is from a she is from a sort of mythical seafaring culture. She's the only one from that culture we see, and it seems like she has probably been cast out of her home, but she's also very much mistrusted and treated as an outsider among the people that she's captaining or working around, but she has some uh, perhaps mystical abilities that help her be a good sailor, so that's why she's in the position of captain. Then back in the city of Tova, we have Naranpa, who is the sun priest. She has ascended to this position of power despite being not only a commoner but from the worst slum of the city rather than being from one of the four clans that rule the city. So she's facing a lot of discrimination, a lot of people think she shouldn't be in the position that she's in, and she is sort of trying to bring power back to the priesthood and assert her own role. She has a lot of strong views about how things should be done, 
but she's struggling against the status quo and against people's opinions of her and she is dealing with a lot of internal politics in the city. Then the fourth viewpoint character, Okoa, only comes in later in the story. He is the son of the leader of the Crow clan and he has been off training at basically a war college and he only comes into the narrative a little bit later but he plays a pivotal role through the climax of the book and I think he'll probably have a more important role in the future books as well. Overall, I really enjoyed reading Black Sun. It was a very quick read and I thought it was well done. I think, if anything, my criticisms just come down to wanting more of certain things, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. A lot of what it did, it did well. It was actually just kind of a short book. I just watched a review by Literature Science Alliance from back in November. I usually try not to watch other people's reviews of books that I'm about to review because I want to sort of think things through by myself and come up with ideas, but I watched her review and she really did a great job of saying, I think I agree with almost everything she said and she said it really well, so I will link to that review as well, but I'm gonna try to put my own thoughts into words here. She was also basically saying she would have liked a 600 page book instead of a 400 page book, and I agree, Black Sun felt kind of short especially for four viewpoint characters, although one of them did come in later and have less, that is barely more than 100 pages per character, which to me that feels like not very much at all. And sure, I did just get off a huge Brandon Sanderson reread, but I, I like being able to spend more time with characters. I feel like with the time that she had, she created really distinct characters. Like you really got a feel for each character's personality. You understood enough of their background. The important characters each had a couple of flashbacks. So you got sort of the necessary background about where they were coming from, but you didn't really get to feel like you lived through those flashbacks. It was all very concise. And I think with that amount of space, she really did a great job. It's just with something like that, I personally, for epic fantasy, I want more. I want to be able to feel the scope of the story. And this was not a story that really had a huge scope. It was very laser focused on certain characters and what they were going through. I felt pretty emotionally invested in those characters. For me, with characters, the top tier for me is characters I love so much I would read about them doing literally nothing. I wouldn't put her characters really on that level, but I definitely felt like I cared what happened to them. I wanted to follow their journey. I felt like I connected to them emotionally. You know, I felt a certain level of investment in them and their motivations. I don't know if the motivations were as fleshed out as they could have been, but I wasn't really questioning it while I was reading. I was very much understanding why the characters were doing what they were doing. Actually, in the types of character arcs that she chose to do with these characters, I was reminded a lot of N.K. Jemisin. There's a lot that's different. I wouldn't necessarily compare the two writers overall, especially not in style, but just in terms of how I was reacting to the characters, the feeling I got from them, the kind of things the characters were experiencing, or just like the kind of character arcs they were going through, I did feel kind of reminded of some of the N.K. Jemisin books that I've read. Again, in terms of wishing the book had a little more scope and development, one thing that I struggled with a little bit was that all four of these characters, especially the three that we spend the most time with, really were outsiders in different ways. None of them were really part of the status quo, and I think when you're in a secondary world setting like this, it's really nice to get to experience what the normal is before you experience what's not normal. And that's something this book didn't really have the space to do. Again, I feel kind of bad if she wanted to write a longer book and her publishers told her, no, you have 400 pages, that's really unfair. But I just feel like epic fantasy, just it just needs a bit more time. It didn't need to be a 1200 page monstrosity, but I wish we'd just gotten a little bit more. I wish we'd had a character that was less questioning, less misunderstood, less different, because that allows you to understand the other characters even more, and it allows for a different kind of character arc. In terms of the plot as well, I feel like it was so fast paced that we never really got to see what normal was. We were just in these events. And she, again, she did a really good job conveying what the world was like for the amount of page space, but I just wish we had gotten to sit with it a little bit more. But like I said, wanting more of something is not really a bad thing. I think it's much better than if I had come into this review saying, oh man, the book was good, but it was just way too long and there was too much extra pointless stuff. So definitely in terms of the world building, it felt like she did a lot with a little. It is not one of those books where you get to see huge amounts of the world or things really get explained. In a way, it's very immersive 
because you are just thrown into it and a lot of stuff isn't explained or only gets explained later and even then maybe not in great detail but you really get a strong feel for the world there's a lot of color a lot of detail there were little details in it that i thought were very evocative like for example at least in the city of toba people are using cacao beans as money which i thought was really interesting and then i looked it up and yes that was something that certain cultures did so there are a lot of things like that details that are really different than things you'll normally see in a fantasy book but that are taken from the indigenous cultures of the Americas and I thought that was really interesting and really brought that kind of depth to the setting. Sometimes in books where there isn't a lot of space devoted to world building, I feel a lack of depth. And what I really like to feel in world building is a sense of depth, whether things get actually fleshed out or not. I want to have that feeling, like that feeling you get when you're reading Tolkien, where you know that there are all those stories that you aren't even hearing about, but you know those stories are there, you know there's this rich history. And I did really get that from this book, even though it was so short. I felt like whether it, whether or not the author has even imagined all of this backstory, I just kind of felt it. But on the other hand, there was so little time devoted to world building that I feel like I don't have a great idea how even the basic political structures really work by the end of the book. We got enough to understand the plot, but it's definitely not something I could explain to someone else or really felt like I understood. So again, I would have loved to see a little bit more just of how everything works. Like Naranpa, the priest character, you get one flashback of her as a child and then she's grown up and she's the high priest. And I mean, a book I would have loved would be seeing how she got there, but that's not the story that Rebecca Roanhorse was telling and that's totally fine. I feel like to me, I wouldn't quite classify Black Sun as epic fantasy for that reason because the plot arcs didn't feel that epic to me. I mean, some epic things kind of happened, they were pretty cool, but it, the book didn't have that kind of scope that I associate with epic fantasy. But I mean, I'm not gonna be a person that says what is and isn't epic fantasy. It's definitely something that involves like the fate of gods and a secondary world. So yeah, I understand that it's epic fantasy. I guess I'm just keep coming back to the same point, which is that for me, I would have just preferred a lot more fleshing out of all of it. And that's because it was all very interesting and I would have liked to see more. I really did appreciate the setting as well. I cannot speak to the authenticity of how the different cultures were represented, but then again, it wasn't intended to be a one-to-one -one transposition of real world cultures onto this fantasy. I think she just took different elements and created something new, which is totally how traditional traditional fantasy with kind of a European Western setting is constructed. So to me, it makes perfect sense. And I really like that. But I don't know how that would be received by somebody that is from some of these cultures, if it would speak, you know, well with them or not. The last thing that I did not love about this book is that as well as feeling a bit short, it felt really incomplete to me. It felt like the whole thing was just build up to this one event and then it sort of ends on a massive cliffhanger. So in a way it feels like it has no plot at all. Like it was all an introduction and we, we sort of were headed towards something and then the book kind of ends in a not very satisfying way. So this is something where if you generally prefer to read a complete series or you don't like cliffhangers or you want to know that it's going to have a satisfying ending, you probably should wait to pick up this series until more books release. I'm basically okay with reading things on the promise of future books and you know we'll see how I feel about the future books when they come out. I will definitely keep reading the series but I did feel a little bit like everything had just been cut short and ended suddenly. It was a great intro to a series but I didn't feel like I got, this was an appetizer, I didn't feel like I got the whole meal. And so hopefully the complete trilogy, I'm pretty sure it's a trilogy, hopefully that will tell a satisfying complete story but I definitely personally really enjoy books where you feel when you finish the first one that okay I could just read this one and I would be happy. This is just again a choice by the author and the publisher. It is neither good nor bad. It's just a matter of personal preference and once the whole series is out then you can you know make your own decision how you feel about it. But I think there are a lot of things about this book that are really unique. I like Rebecca Roanhorse's writing even though she hasn't written a book yet that is totally a home run for me. So I'm definitely going to keep reading her books and I'm looking forward to more books in this series. And I feel like I would still and I feel like I would still recommend it as long as you're okay with feeling a little bit unsatisfied at the end because of how the plot ends. So thanks so much for watching my review of Black Sun. Let me know down in the comments if you've read this book and what you thought of it or if you think it's something you'd be interested in.